G'day, I'm Paul. So what happens if you want an SUV and a hot hatch? Well, you have an SUV hot hatch. <laughs> this is what this is. This is called the Volkswagen T-Roc. This is the R version. We have driven the R line before, but this is the full fat R version. And I did promise that we'd take this for a spin. So today that is what we're gonna be doing. This competes with things just in terms of size, like Kia Seltos, Renault Captur. It's that sort of size of vehicle. Full fat R version is priced at just under 64,000. There are currently drive away offers. So if you do wanna find out about those, uh, just Google help me car expert. If that's too expensive, the entire range is in the non R range, kicks off at just under 37 grand. Today we're going to do a detailed review of this car so if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review you can use time codes on the screen or if you're on YouTube you can scroll down and use the chapters below and if you haven't done so already subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive a hot hatch SUV. Now let's talk exterior so it's not an enormous SUV and I think that's probably what people want they want a small vehicle that sits a little higher off the ground and this kind of fits that brief and then it goes uh, all out with it being the proper sort of R version. Now it is a little bit confusing but this engine is shared with other Volkswagen products and other uh, Cupra products as well and other sort of Volkswagen group products and it is a slightly detuned version of what we see in the Golf R but it is still sort of fairly potent at around 220 kilowatts of power so we'll be interested to see how it drives. A big Volkswagen logo here, chrome down the front there. I like this blue color to it really stands out nicely in traffic you get matrix led headlights led daytime running lights down here plus exposed cooling down the bottom there which is cool come around right to the side so over here 19 inch alloy wheels got a machine finish on the outside there piano black on the inside there 340 mil rotors so it is a decent braking package and hopefully it'll mean that it gives it the sporty intent that it deserves. You've got uh, wheel arch cladding there with a little bit of uh, an aero element there as well. Another R badge on the side there, uh, indicator over here uh, with no 360 camera, which is a little bit disappointing. You have roof rails here, black roof as part of that color package. The optional colors are seven or 900 bucks, depending on which color you go for. A bit of carbon, or faux carbon. Uh, come around to the back with me. Now around the back here, another R badge. Uh, you've got the Volkswagen logo here that doubles as a boot opener. You've got shark fin aerial up the top there, privacy glass around the side there, and then full LED tail lights as well. Look at that, quad exhaust pipes too. So let me know what you reckon about the design in the comments section below. Do you think it looks good? I am keen to take this for a drive and see what it's like around our ride and handling track. So we are inside the T-Rock. This is what the key looks like. Stepping back in time here, you've got lock, boot, Unlock, Volkswagen logo on the back. Look at this, an actual key. Uh, it's a proximity sensing key as well. Little R logo there too. So you can leave that in your pocket, grab the door handle. Once you're inside, you have a push button start down here. So in terms of uh, feedback on this interior, I mentioned in our last T-Rock review that they have actually updated this and considered some of the feedback that we had. So there's soft touch materials used more throughout the cabin. There is still a lot of piano black here. So up on the top there, and then it cascades down the bottom here as well. So it is a fair bit of piano blackage, but um, it is what it is. Uh, big infotainment system up the top there, and then a screen ahead of the driver as well that I'll run you through in a sec. In terms of the touch points, so sort of fairly firm there, softish on the door. How soft are they? We've got our durometer here. We've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you do want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, look at the link in the description below. Now, build quality. All right, it all feels nice and solid, and this is the door sound. It's going to beep, I think. Let me switch that off. Now, what about your infotainment? So you've got a 10.25 inch infotainment system up the top here. It is a touch screen, also has gesture control, so you can swipe your hand across like that and it does stuff. You have inbuilt satellite navigation, so you don't need to pair your phone if you don't necessarily want to. On the audio front, you have a six speaker sound system along with AM, FM and DAB digital radio. Uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is here as well. I'll show you what Apple CarPlay looks like. So that's it there. It is wireless, uh, which is good. Nice and quick as well, so no dramas there. And this is Android Auto. So nice full screen integration there as well. No dramas at all. Now, ahead of the driver, you have a smaller display. So this is a trip computer, driving functions, all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's customizable as well, so you can flick between a number of different views here. Uh, so you really do have a lot of customizability there, which is good. 
Moving on to safety, you've got autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection. You've got an auto dimming rear vision mirror, blind spot monitor built into the wing mirror. You have both front and rear parking sensors. It's got radar, cruise control, and a lane keeping assistant. Uh, in addition to that, you have rear cross traffic alert and also a reverse view camera. I'll show you what that looks like. There it is there. Quality's okay, it's sort of a bit grainy and not sort of amazing, but uh, it's fine and also misses out on a 360 camera as well. And this is what the horn sounds like. Now practicality, and we'll start off with connectivity. You've got two USB-C ports down the front here, a 12 volts outlet, a wireless phone charger. In terms of storing your phone, it can kind of live anywhere. There's plenty of room around there. Bottles and cups, I've got my little coffee cup. So, oh look at that, it actually fits in the centre there, kind of. Yeah, uh, and the, at the back as well. So it's actually quite good. So you've got a deeper slot at the front there that has more room, a tighter one for a piccolo cup, and then one at the back there for my little baby lardo. Um, bottles, this is the size of a normal sort of uh, bottle with a little thermometer on top. Um, that fits up the front there, but kind of doesn't fit down the back there because of this armrest, which slides forwards and backwards. Uh, fits inside the door though, and judging by the size of that space, I think we can fit our big bottle in too. Excellent. Uh, other storage, you've got this tiny little center console there, and you've got a glove box over here as well that's pretty reasonable with the space there, I think, for CD player back when these had them as well. Moving on to comfort, so you have dual zone automatic climate control up the front here, you have heated seats. Uh, look, the seats are pretty firm, so for longer distance drives, you're going to need to have a little bit of a stretch. They do hug you in nicely though. Um, the steering wheel, so sits great in the hand, it's a great sort of steering wheel, but I hate these buttons, they're sort of haptic feedback, you're constantly nudging them while you're driving, and it's not a huge fan of them, but big paddle shifters there, and it should be good fun once we uh, actually go for a spin. Steering offers both tilt and reach adjustment, now reach test, all of this stuff is easy to reach, and then the seats are electrically adjustable for the driver's side, so you can go forwards and backwards, your backrest can go forwards and backwards, you can lift the front of the seat, the back of the seat, and then you also have lumbar adjustment as well. Now, back seat, uh, there is not much room back here, so my knees are kind of wedged into there. My seat is pretty far back, but um, yeah, not exactly the most spacious second row in the world. Uh, you've got map pockets in the back of the seats, air vents, USB-C charging. You've got a center armrest here with a couple of cup holders and a little divider that moves forwards and backwards. Skate port access to the boot. ISO fix points on your two outboard seats and top tether points as well. And finally, our window test. Does it go all the way down? Oh, look at that. Excellent. Now let's talk cargo space. So uh, being a small SUV, it's not really amazing. You have just under 400 litres available here. Under the cargo floor, you've got a space saver spare. So you do have a little bit more room to play with there if you do want to. You can lower that floor just to give you a little bit more space if you need to, but um, that is what you have to work with. I'll show you what it looks like with our bags in there. So, this laptop bag and then suitcase. It doesn't fit that way. Just slide it in like that. Now, you can expand the space to give you a little bit more room by getting rid of your cargo blinds. And then what you can do is drop the second row out of the way. And that increases the space to a little over 1,200 litres. So we've just hit the road in the T-Roc car, I'll run you through the engine under the bonnet here. So it uses a two litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol engine. And I mentioned earlier that it's, it's a similar sort of engine to uh, other vehicles in the Volkswagen Group range, but this one has a slightly less uh, sort of optimized tune. It's less power output compared to some of the newer generation stuff. So that means it produces just over 220 kilowatts of power and 400 newton meters of torque. And it's all mated to a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Now, dual clutches in Volkswagens, uh, they used to be not that great. They have definitely improved. And this one here is, is feeling better. It seems the more of a performance application that it has, the better it feels behind the wheel. And this one's kind of no exception. So if we come to a slow here and then roll onto the throttle, it just sort of bites quite quickly and it just sort of moves away. It feels very torque converter-like. It doesn't feel very much like the dual clutches they use in less sporty applications. Now, what does all that feel like behind the wheel? So if you do get stuck into it, it is pretty laggy 
in, uh, in just standard driving mode, and that is because it's not all that eager to shift down gears. If you do sort of stab the throttle, it will eventually kick down, and it gives you a nice little push in the back. Uh, all of that torque is sent through an all-wheel drive system, so it means that you do have that added traction in, uh, when you sort of compare it to a front-wheel drive vehicle. Now Volkswagen claims a combined fuel economy of 8 litres per 100 k's, but our long term average is 9.2, so this car's done uh, around 3,000 kilometres, so the figure's not too bad, that's a mix of uh, city driving, highway driving, uh, track driving for this car as well, so I think that figure is actually pretty good, especially when you consider the type of performance it's on offer. Now let's talk about the ride, so yeah, look, in comfort mode, which is what it's in now, this has adaptive damping, it is firm, like it is on the firmer side of comfortable, but it's not the end of the world. As you progress through the drive modes, and I'll run you through those in a second, it does get significantly firmer, and that's where you'll realise that um, you know this really does have that performance application in mind. It is on fairly low profile tyres as well, so you are going to find that when you are driving in and around the city on uh, speed humps, potholes, that kind of thing, it is going to feel just a little bit firm. Okay, sine wave time, we do this at 130 k's an hour crank the speed up that's the maximum speed limit in Australia and uh, for all you city slickers out there if you do leave the city and drive rurally you will find roads like this uh, with sine waves on them fairly regularly and this is just a good indication of how the vehicle performs on this type of road at the maximum speed that is excellent so yeah we typically find with sportier vehicles that they do perform really well on those sine waves so yeah big tick there Okay, bumpy road time. We do this at 90 k's an hour to see what this is like on a corrugated road. Got our little condensed sine wave here as well. It's our light getting rattled. It's actually not too bad. Yeah, look, it is, it is firm, we know that. Uh, not at all surprised by this, but um, if you do need to take it on a bumpy road, it's going to be perfectly fine. Now let's talk drive modes. So you have some off-road modes, so you can go to the off-road setting, off-road expert setting, they all sort of change throttle response and stability control, but then in terms of our actual drive modes, eco, comfort, normal, race and individual. I'm going to pop it into race, so you can see there it puts the gearbox into sport mode. The ride becomes significantly firmer, but it dials up everything a nice little bark out of the exhaust there. The brakes feel fantastic. We'll go for a lap of our track here just to see how this goes. Wow. Traction around that corner is sensational. And that's a low friction surface as well. Man, this thing is unreal. It is absolutely hammering. Oh, far out. Oh, I am actually lost for words. It is absolutely moving. Holy crap. I thought the Tiguan R was quick, but this is like, this is next level. It's a smaller vehicle. God, those brakes are fantastic. This has mid-corner traction like you would not believe. Oh. <laughs> I actually don't have time to speak here. This is unreal. Wow. Absolutely unreal. I am just completely gobsmacked. That is awesome. Far out. That is unreal. That is absolutely awesome. Volkswagen has done such a good job with this. When the speed picks up, that is unreal. Very, very impressed with that. Very nice. Um, I did keep bumping this though, the steering wheel heater, which is quite annoying, but outside of that, that is cool. Now let's talk visibility. So I can see clearly down the front of the car there, the wing mirrors are nice and big. I've got a blind spot monitor built into there. Envelope out the back isn't great. It's quite a sort of narrow envelope, but it's not the end of the world. The turning circle comes in at a little over 11 metres, and then our towing capacity is 1,700 kilograms with a brake trailer. Okay, road noise, what's it like? Uh, there is a bit coming into the cabin here on coarse chip surfaces, especially at higher speeds, so you will tend to notice that if you're doing a highway drive. But, um, you know, it's fine. Not the end of the world, but it is just a little bit noisy for my liking. 
Okay, time to do a little bit of performance testing. Uh, before we do that, I wanted to tell you about Help Me Car Expert. If you go to Google and type in Help Me Car Expert, it'll take you to a page on our site where we can connect you with some of our vetted dealers who are there to get you the best deal possible. Uh, cars like this are in stock at the moment, but there's also drive-by offers right now as we film this. So if you do want one of these, uh, go have a look at our site and we will connect you. Now, the official zero to 100 time is 4.9 seconds. So I'm gonna whack this into ESC Sport. I'm gonna put this into race mode as well. And then it actually has a launch control. So all you do is just foot on the brake, foot on the throttle. It'll come up saying launch control active and then you just let go of the brake. So here we go. Sounds so good. All right, here we go. Oh, nice. That took off very nicely. All right, there's 100. We'll go through to 120. That is nice and quick. Excellent. All right, I'll pull over here. Look at how that went. So, 0 to 100. Took 4.82 seconds, so slightly faster than the claimed figure and then 80 to 120, 3.28 seconds. That is very quick as well. Very impressive. Okay, now our brake from 100. Dial up 100 k's an hour, just above 100 k's an hour. Drop the anchors, here we go. Oh, that feels really strong. Wow, that was impressive. I'm curious to see how that went. Uh, so 100 to zero. Nice, 2.65 seconds, 36.85 metres. That is a very impressive stopping figure. Nice one. And now the part you've all been waiting for. How fast does it go in reverse? Here we go. Put some rims. <laughs> 30 kilometres now. So the Terra car, what do we think? Look, this is sensational fun to drive. I, I just haven't had a smile on my face like that for quite some time. It is just an absolute beast through the corners. That all-wheel drive system and the engine in this tiny little package is just out of control. So it does fit that brief of being a hot hatch, but also a small SUV. So tick, tick on those. It is a lot of money. It's over $60,000. Even with the driveway offer, it is sort of getting up there. But ultimately, you cannot beat this with anything else in this segment when it comes to performance. It is just an absolute hoot to drive. So I hope they do continue this in the future and this engine lives on a little bit longer. I know that they're going hard with electric stuff, but it would be good to see this live on uh, and then also lose those steering wheel buttons as well, which they're slowly doing, thank goodness. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. Have you bought one of these? What's it like? Are you having as much fun with it as I was today? I'm keen to know. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon as well. But until next time, drive safely.